Um, very well bowled today. Um, it's, um, it's not a lot of time has passed since Wednesday when, um, you know, I'm sure you had a game which you'd rather not have again. Um, how do you change that so quickly? You know, it's just the other day, it's just, you're all in the same scenario and, and environment. How do you change it so quickly? Um, yeah, obviously um, the, the first game didn't go according to plan uh, by any stretch of imagination, but that's how T20 cricket is, you know. Um, and I think credit goes to the management as well, as well as, you know, all the players around the group, because nobody even had a word with me. And that's, that's the best way to deal with something like that, you know. Um, you know, it's an anomaly. And on a field like Bristol, uh, maybe it looks bigger on TV, but um, it's quite small. Um, so yeah, these things happen. Um, I think as, as a bowler, that's all that I keep in my mind, you know. Um, we're playing T20 cricket, we're playing against world-class players. So from time to time, things like that might happen. Um, you obviously just learn from it. Um, it's not something that you need to change majorly. Um, like you mentioned, you know, it's just an odd performance here and there. Um, so yeah, I didn't really give too much thought to it. Um, I don't think there was much to think about because a lot of that was not great, to be honest. Um, but yeah, just focused on, on what I know I can do best from the next couple of games. And um, thankfully, you know, we're back on track. Thanks, Talfit. Kim? Thanks, Lucy. Uh, very well, Bob. Uh, you, you mentioned Bristol being uh, very small and uh, Cardiff also had a couple of pretty short boundaries. Uh, today, Southampton, a nice big field. How much confidence do you and the team take from what was really a, a brilliant all-round display today? Um, looking at the World Cup where the, the grounds are going to be similar to what, what you played on today, isn't it? Yeah, it's been brilliant, um, you know, starting from the batsmen when we batted first um, to the fielding and then the bowlers as well. You know, it wasn't only me today. When the guys bowled before me, they did a great job as well. So there's a nice thing building up with our team. And I think we've been on that journey since last year, um, since before the World Cup um, as well. So there's a good, good amount of confidence um, within the team. Um, we know we have different match winners and you can see throughout this series and the previous series as well. Um, that there's different guys that, that win these Man of the Match awards and, and put in um, game-changing spells or, or, or innings with the bat, you know. Um, so I think that's a nice thing about our squad. We don't rely on one or two guys. Um, and we know, we have, a, we have a certain game plan that we're trying to follow. Um, and we don't really pay too much attention to how the other teams are playing. We play to our strengths and, and try and work on those. Thanks, Ken. For those, then Nathan. Sure, sorry. So, sorry, Ken. Can Trevor just answer about big fields? Uh, is that what you expect in Australia? Yeah, obviously as a, as a bowler that really helps. Um, something like Bristol or Cardiff. At least Cardiff had one big side. So as a bowler, you can come up with certain game plans to try and, and, and you know, counter what the batsman might be trying to do. Uh, Australia obviously has bigger fields. And I think it brings the skill of the batsman um, versus the bowler more into play versus when boundaries are so short. It, it's really one-sided and, and it's about who can get hit for less rather than ball versus bat. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Like I mentioned, you know, our batsmen are really skillful. Um, so, you know, for us, it's no issue if it's bigger boundaries and, and we're not hitting sixes. Our guys have different game plans. They can find the boundaries. They can run hard. Um, so we're very confident with, with the way um, the fields are going to be in Australia and with the way our team is shaping up. Thanks, Ken. Good Hi, Shama. Well, Bill. Uh, Chama, I heard you say on the, the presentation that uh, your wife expected four wickets today, like, like it was going to the supermarket and, and maybe just picking them up there. And you've spoken before about, you know, expectation on you to, to get wickets. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what that's been like? You know, do you feel a bit of pressure? And also, what does it do to your confidence when, when you go through like a game where you don't get any wickets and then you go through two where you become the leading of the taker in the series? Yeah, I think, I think what's important there is just to, just to know what your management staff and your captain wants from you. Um, obviously, there was a whole big talk when, when Imi retired. Um, you know, he was, a, he was a big weapon in our attack and then I was expected to fill in his shoes. But I don't see things that way, you know. Um, I've been able to, to learn a lot about my bowling and that I know that, you know, sometimes a captain might just want me to hold the game. So I'll try and hold the game. And in other instances, if the captain wants me to take wickets, I can try and take wickets. So um, I think the expectations, obviously, um, people have different perceptions, but I really go uh, on what the captain wants from me on the day and 
probably Kuni behind the stumps. You know, that's what I try and gauge things from and try and do whatever um, the team needs on, on the day for us to win the game. Whereas, you know, for example, today, the rate was already at like 11s or, or 9s or something like that when I came on to bowl. So for me, my first priority was just to keep that run rate going up. And that obviously brings a wicket. So, yeah, for me, I don't see it as a, as a disappointing game if I don't take wickets. I'm happy doing my role because I know as a bowling unit, we're all capable of taking wickets. And on the day, we're all also capable of, you know, holding the game for the other bowlers to take the wickets. Thanks for those. Uh, sorry, Nathan, before we go to you, we'll just open up to the floor, please. What about today? Um, when you come against a team like England at home with such strength in white ball cricket in particular, how much and the confidence, how much kind of, you know, does that add to the success that you have against them? Yeah, I think it's, it's really important to, to have a strong, strong heart. Um, when you play against a team like England, you know, um, and I mentioned pre-series as well, that sort of works out in my favour, um, the way I like to bowl. Obviously, you know, there's no guessing game, you know the guys are coming at you. So it almost, you know, it can, it can help you come up with game plans better in a way. Obviously, it's a lot tougher because they're all capable of hitting sixes and, and you know, um, spoiling your day. But then again, it also gives you an opportunity to take wickets. So for me personally, I enjoy that kind of a challenge. Um, and yeah, that, that actually uh, brings the best out of me, I guess. There's a lot of focus obviously on the T20 World Cup coming up in October. Beating them in the previous tournament, and now just beating them at home. If you meet them in the World Cup, is that a good place to be, to be functioning from? Because it's likely to be a knockout game, they're not in your group. So if you do face them, you've got some confidence behind you? Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously, uh, like you mentioned, a knockout game in the World Cup, you'd rather go into that game having beaten the opposition than being on the losing side. But having said that, you know, they're also an amazing team, just like we are. So on the day, anyone can win, but definitely it does, um, as a player and as a team, put you in a, in a good space, you know, knowing that you've had the upper hand over the opposition. And I think they would respect you a little bit more as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it happens to most bowlers, you know, they're bowling nicely and then when the hat-trick ball comes, something goes wrong because you, you're so excited to get that hat-trick. Obviously, it's a very rare feat. Um, so, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with where I put that ball. Yeah, obviously he's been a great leader for, for England and, you know, they've won um, the World Cup under his leadership and the way they've, they've changed their game around. But I think for us, uh, that, that wasn't really a big focus because we know whoever replaces him is also going to be a quality cricketer. Um, so, yeah, I think we just focus more on what we needed to do against this English team um, and formulate our game plans. I think um, that's what we chose to focus on more and I think that's our blueprint as a team. Um, we obviously analyse the opposition but we try and see where we can upskill ourselves and how we can counteract their, their way of play. Super, we're going to take the two last questions from online, that being Nathan, and then we're going to wrap up with Kaniso before we hand over to Dave Miller. Um, thank you, Lucy. Uh, Shamo, as a collective voting unit, how would you assess the T20 series on a performance basis? Uh, any areas that you work, that uh, work for you guys uh, and any areas that collectively you guys will be looking to fix and move forward? Um, look, overall, I think we're very, very pleased with the way our bowling unit's going, not just in this series, um, previous World Cup, leading up to the World Cup as well. I think we're in a very good space. Um, like I mentioned, you know, we have wicket takers throughout. Um, anybody can win the game for the team on the day. Um, and yeah, I think um, if we have to look at the series as a, as a whole, I'm very happy with the way we've performed. Um, and the nice thing is the guys just put that in the bag and, and try and improve for the next series. Um, and yeah, we have full confidence in, in our bowling unit and I'm, I'm certainly very, very happy um, with where we're at. Thanks, Nathan. And then lastly, Kaniso. Uh, good evening, to Tabriz. Uh, congratulations on the series result and performance today. Um, you're not a selector, um, uh, but um, what kind of conundrum have you guys thrown up to selectors? The fact that they've, they've, they've been performances not just through the ICs, but through the 20 years, and you rightly say that 
the guys that took performances that will now ask very pertinent questions of the selectors ahead of the World Cup. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, obviously, we're very, very happy with the series win. Um, and, you know, luckily I'm not the selector. The captain will be up next, um, so you can ask that question to him. Uh, he's got a bit more headaches than I do. Um, but, you know, as, as a squad, that's what you want. You want guys performing. Um, and I think healthy composition is always good in a squad. Um, so, yeah, I think that's where I want to leave this. Um, David will be ready um, when he steps up for that. <laughs>